He is known for being a prominent German philosopher and legal scholar. He is recognized for his expertise in criminal law and medieval jurisprudence. His name is Friedrich Karl von Savigny. Friedrich Karl von Savigny, a prominent figure in legal philosophy, was born into a family with a rich history in the region of Lorraine. His family's name was derived from the illustrious castle of Savigny near Charms, nestled in the picturesque valley of the Moselle. However, tragedy struck young Savigny at the tender age of 13, as he found himself orphaned and in need of guidance. Fortunately, a guardian stepped forward to provide him with the guidance and support he needed. Despite facing poor health, Savigny's determination and thirst for knowledge led him to enroll at the University of Marburg in 1795. It was there that he had the privilege of studying under esteemed professors, Anton Bauer and Philipp Friedrich Weiss. Bauer was a trailblazer in the reform of German criminal law, while Weiss was renowned for his expertise in medieval jurisprudence. Like many German students of his time, Savigny embarked on a journey of intellectual exploration by visiting various universities, including Jena, Leipzig, and Halle. However, his return to Marburg proved to be a turning point in his academic journey, as he successfully obtained his doctorate in 1800. As a privatdozent, or private lecturer, at Marburg, Savigny imparted his knowledge on criminal law and the Pandex, making a significant impact on his students and the field of legal philosophy. Savigny's story is one of resilience and intellectual pursuit, as he overcame personal loss and health challenges to become a respected scholar in the realm of law. His dedication to studying different branches of knowledge, such as criminal law and medieval jurisprudence, laid the foundation for his later philosophical contributions. Savigny's legacy as a prominent figure in legal philosophy continues to be celebrated, as his ideas and teachings shape the understanding of law and its connection to society even today. Friedrich Savigny, a prominent legal scholar of his time, dedicated his life to the study and understanding of Roman law. His groundbreaking work, Das Recht der Besitzes, published in 1803, brought about a revolution in the field of jurisprudence. It marked the end of the uncritical study of Roman law and earned him a reputation across Europe. In 1804, Savigny married Cunigund Brentano, sister of renowned poet Clemens Brentano and Bettina von Arnim. The same year, he embarked on a journey through France and South Germany, seeking fresh sources of Roman law. This voyage allowed him to expand his knowledge and deepen his understanding of the subject. In 1810, at the insistence of Wilhelm von Humboldt, Savigny was appointed as a professor of Roman law at the newly established University of Berlin. Here, he not only lectured but also played an active role in the university's governance. He created a Spruch Collegium, an extraordinary tribunal that delivered opinions on legal cases referred to it by the ordinary courts. Savigny's time in Berlin was marked by intense activity as he balanced his teaching responsibilities, his involvement in the university administration, and his role as a tutor to the crown prince. Savigny's contribution to legal scholarship extended beyond his academic pursuits. In 1814, he published a pamphlet titled Vom Beruf unserer Zeit für Gesetzgebung und die Rechtswissenschaft. In it, he argued against the creation of a unified legal code for Germany, fearing that it would be influenced by shallow philosophical concepts and neglect the historical study of positive law. Savigny believed that legal science should be grounded in a deep understanding of national spirit and the historical development of law. Throughout his career, Savigny made significant contributions to legal history. In 1815, he co-founded the Zeitschrift für Gestuckliche Rechtswissenschaft, a periodical that became the organ of the new historical school. Here, he brought attention to the discovery of the lost institutes of Gaius by Barthold George Niebuhr in Verona, asserting that it was the work of Gaius himself. Savigny's legacy in the field of law is undeniable. His works, such as the six-volume, Gestic de Ramischen Rex in Mittelalter, provided a comprehensive literary history of Roman law from Irnerius to the 16th century. He emphasized the importance of understanding the historical context of law and the continuous influence of Roman law on customs, ecclesiastical doctrines, and school teachings. Savigny's commitment to legal scholarship extended beyond academia. He served as a member of various commissions and played a crucial role in law reforms related to bills of exchange and divorce. In 1842, he was appointed as the head of the Prussian legal system, a position he held until 1848 when he resigned. Friedrich Savigny's dedication to the study of Roman law and his belief in the historical approach to legal science have left an indelible mark on the field of jurisprudence. His teachings and writings continue to inspire legal scholars and practitioners, reminding us of the importance of understanding the past to shape the future of law. Friedrich Karl von Savigny, a prominent figure in the German historical school of jurists, made significant contributions to the field of jurisprudence. 
His works, particularly the Recta Besitzes and the Baruch Unserer Zeit für Gesetzgebung, gained recognition for their innovative approach. In fact, Savigny's Recta Besitzes was seen as a revival of the juridical method of the Romans, leading to the birth of modern jurisprudence, as noted by Gustav Hugo. One of Savigny's key arguments was that possession in Roman law was related to use a capian, or interdicts, rather than a right to continuance in possession. He believed that possession was rooted in the consciousness of unlimited power and only granted immunity from interference. Savigny arrived at these conclusions through the interpretation and harmonization of the works of Roman jurists. However, his ideas faced opposition from scholars like Jering, Gans, and Bruns. In his work, The Baruch Unserer Zeit, Savigny emphasized that law is an integral part of national life. He challenged the notion, popular among French jurists and Bentham, that law could be imposed on a country regardless of its civilization and historical context. Savigny believed that law should be shaped by and reflective of a nation's unique characteristics and development. Furthermore, Savigny emphasized the inseparability of the practice and theory of jurisprudence. He argued that divorcing the two would be detrimental to both. This perspective highlighted the importance of combining practical application with theoretical understanding in the field of law. Savigny's ideas on jurisprudence continue to hold relevance today. His emphasis on understanding and respecting a nation's history and culture in the development of law can help us navigate the complexities of legal systems in our daily lives. Additionally, his insistence on the interdependence of theory and practice reminds us of the need to bridge the gap between abstract legal principles and their practical application. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.